Welcome to the Economics Unit 2 video. In this video, we will be discussing our second topic that has to do with free enterprise systems, with centrally planned systems, as well as the advantages, disadvantages, overview, and descriptions of major economic systems in the world today and in the past. So let's begin by looking at the unit assessment objectives. By the end of this unit, uh, students will be able to identify the three basic economic questions that all societies must answer. In unit one, we discussed concepts such as scarcity and opportunity cost. Now we will begin by asking three basic economic questions. What to produce, who to produce, and for whom to produce. Second, we will be explaining why markets exist. Of course, mark a market is a place of exchange, a place of trade, of goods, commodities, services, people, and labor. We will explore the types of markets in the world and as, as well as discussing the pros and cons of these systems. We will describe how a centrally planned, meaning a governmentally planned economy is organized. Um, in most parts of the world, uh, the market system is prevalent, but in the past, such as if you may have read in World History 2 and World History 1, as well as geography, the Soviet Union is one example of a centrally planned economy, where a few people are in charge and, over, and are in charge of oversight for the entire nation. We will also compare the mixed or the hybrid economies of various nations along a continuum between centrally planned and free market systems. So as discussed in the uh, objectives, the assessment objectives, we will ask the three basic economics questions that all societies face. What goods and services should be produced? How should they be produced? And who gets to consume them? Though the answers to these questions reflect the society's values. What do we mean by this reflection about society's values? Well, as you know, economics and sociology, culture, tradition, they're all intertangled. They are all one. So sometimes a country's economy depends on its history. There's a lot of legacy that comes from generation to generation, and that affects its, uh, its economic style and its economic output and way of method of thinking. So lesson two and three will be interrelated. One will be on free markets, the other on centrally planned ones. We will be discussing the famous 18th century philosopher, Adam Smith, and his views about the self-regulating nature of free markets and how it has been influential in the United States. So Adam Smith, you may have heard of the book, The Wealth of Nations. It was crucial for the founding fathers of the United States, and it was a method, a framework, for utilizing the resources in society. Uh, we will discuss Adam Smith's influence as well as assign some biography uh, uh, subjects on Adam Smith. And we will be discussing the modern day economists who share his view and the ones who are prominent in today's society. Central planning is another system, the opposite, if you will, of what Adam Smith believed in. It is a system where the government relies, uh, sorry, where the government is the decision maker, the shot caller on decisions for entire society. So a government comes into place and it decides, well, for this year, we want more labor in this segment of the economy. We want to manufacture this, pro this product. Uh, we want to focus on some particular areas. Education, let's say, for instance, we will decide on the curriculum and it's in a way an oligarchy type of rule as well. You may have heard of the oli of oligopoly, where a few players run an entire system. Central planning, when it comes to government, is a little similar to that. Okay, so moving on, we will be talking about the mixed economies. Uh, probably no nation in the world today has a strictly free or a strictly central type of economy. There is a mix, there is a compromise in every country in terms of the economies we see. So uh, in those, I, we want to just hammer in these concepts as just that, as concept. 
what it means to be a completely free enterprise and what it means to be a completely central enterprise. But societies, in fact, include at least some mixing of these two. So moving on to lesson five. We will be talking about the benefits of free enterprise, one of the concepts we've discussed. Now, of course, no system is perfect. We understand that. But for this uh, unit's sake, we will be discussing the benefits of a free market, of a market system. When we say there's self-regulation, that means the populace is more involved. The general population is more engaged in the decision making of businesses and of the future of the country and its economy. We will be discussing economic freedom and its role historically in the United States as well. Finally, the last two lessons, six and seven, we will be talking about the proper role of government in the economy. It is a hotly debated topic. Open any news channel, say CNN, NBC, Fox, and you will find economic debates going on all the time about the role of government in our everyday life and its influence on the economy. So we want to understand each point of view. So we don't want to make caricatures out of um, capitalism, socialism, or whatever uh, systems that are, um, you know, these hot words and the hot takes that we see on the news. We don't want to characterize them in a certain way. We don't want to be prejudiced. What we want to do is refine these concepts, see what they mean. What does it mean uh, that free markets provide solutions to economics questions, but we know nothing's perfect. So how can the government help? How can the government and market work in unison to produce the best possible outcome for people and for future generations as well? So I hope this unit video has been clear. I hope it has been enriching. I hope it gave you a little idea about what to expect. And of course, we will be delving into details every day in class. So we make sure that you have a strong grasp of these concepts and their consequences. Thank you.